Hey guys, welcome back to Tech Tip Tuesday. Today we're talking about something I've never really seen discussed, but in our uh, process of making these new Rife screw in pressure sensors and map sensors, we discovered, um, so I wanted to bring it to your attention so you could pay attention to it. No matter what brand you run, no matter what sensor, what style, whether it's map or pressure, it's something that's relevant and can have a huge effect on not only tuning, but also the performance of what it's being used on. So again, we're talking about these pressure sensors. Uh, typically you'll see them zero to 100, zero to 150. Uh, in the rifle line, uh, shameless plug, we have them in 60, 100, 150, 200, 300, 500, and 1600. Uh, we also have them in one to 10 bar map. Um, now what we're talking about today is the calibration of these. So a lot of sensors on the market are simply relabel uh, sensors. And to be quite honest with you, I have a feeling a lot of people just slap a label on, throw them in a box. Good, bad, or otherwise, uh, we've all been using them for years. Uh, but the one thing that isn't brought up very much is the deviation on these sensors within any certain one you buy. So for instance, a um, 100 PSI sensor. During our uh, market research and just understanding of this, as well as our own testing and uh, quality control that we used when we were building these, we decided we were gonna test every single sensor to make sure it has a pass fail, um, both at the low and higher range, as far as a percentage deviation from what it actually should be at. And that means from zero, is it showing negative 0.5? Is it showing 0.5? Um, is it showing, um, or it should be 100? Is it showing 95? Should it be showing, uh, or is it showing 105? Most sensor manufacturers have a one to 5% uh, deviation or acceptable range in calibration. And what that means is uh, if you have a 100 PSI sensor, and uh, your zero to five volt scaling says 100. So let's say if it's a zero to 100 uh, PSI sensor, it's gonna have a 4.5 volt um, reading at 100 PSI. Great, right? But if you don't actually know that it's 100 and it's just showing 4.5, because the sensor doesn't actually know what the real pressure is, we are interpolating or calculating the pressure off of the voltage. Say that sensor is uh, actually 95, right? So that is also 4.5 because they have an acceptable range of 5%. So let's just say your car has been together for two years. Uh, you're at the track, a sensor fails. You grab another 100 PSI sensor out of the box and all of a sudden it's on the higher side of that 5% uh, tolerance. So it's actually at 105. Uh, this is real reading. So 95 would be real that would be real. So you're at the same 4.5 volts. To the sensor, to the scaling in your computer, it still thinks it's at 100. But what you have found now is a 10 PSI swing. So for instance, if this is on a boost controller, um, what was actually 95 PSI now, it's allowing it to target that same 4.5 volts or 100, but it's actually getting to 105 before it says it's at 4.5. So now you effectively have a 10 PSI disparity between your old sensor and your new sensor. How are you expected to make uh, your boost controller work like that? And chances are the car is not even gonna leave the line. Um, as you may or may not know from like boost control uh, tuning, one PSI can be huge. I mean, we're talking about 40 to 50 uh, horsepower per pound of boost, typically. You know, it can range between 20 to 50, whatever you wanna call it. Fuel pressure, same way. You could go from a safe condition to a not safe condition. And of course, this dynamically can work backwards. So you could think you had 100 where you actually had 105 and then you go down to 95. If you have a locked out fuel map, now you have 10 PSI too little of fuel and then you burn it up. Now the same can be true of map sensors. Uh, they also have the same tolerance. And as we found in our uh, kind of just seeing what the industry standard was for these sensors, a lot of them again are two to five, some of them are 1% deviation. So 5% is huge, 2% is also huge because you could create a four PSI spread. Now, am I trashing anybody else's product? No, but it's something I wanted to make you guys aware of. 
This is why on the rifle line, we went and basically said, we are going to lock ours in at 0.5%. It's the smallest range that we could find acceptable to. We're gonna have some pass fail issues where we have a few that fail, but we would much rather have it be a closer target and a closer match, whether you buy 100 PSI today or next week, or you just have three you get at the same time. So something to look at, uh, something to consider if you're replacing sensors that have gone bad, you may wanna put a mechanical gauge on it, see what it was at before, what it's at now. You can never calibrate too much. I know there's a lot of talk out there about calibrating um, wideband O2s, that's also proper. Uh, but mainly what we're talking about is a reference from one day to the next. While that 95 didn't actually matter compared to the 100 because the car was running good, your plugs look clean, everything's fine. When you go to switch it out, that's when you start to see the problems. So nobody talks about this stuff. It's something I wanted to bring to your attention and you can definitely calibrate for it. You don't necessarily have to say that that brand sensor is junk or anything like that, uh, but it's something you wanna be cognizant about. Hopefully this made sense to you guys. We're really excited about this Rife brand of sensors. It is the highest quality sensor on the market right now. It has a vibration isolated O-ring design and uh, uses the same sensor core that we've been using in our Rife block for years, which is super successful. We've had tremendous success with those in those cores, and we've been testing these uh, standalone eighth inch screw in sensors for years. I'll put a link to them down below in the description so you guys can check them out, get one for your car. Thanks for tuning in to Tech Tip Tuesday. If you guys have ideas for the next Tech Tip Tuesday, drop them down below in the comments. We'd love to hear from you guys. We'll see you next time. Tech Tip Tuesday. Tech Tip Tuesday. Hey guys, 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 hey Tuesday. Hey, 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 hey. Tech Tip Tuesday. Tech Tip Tuesday.